Great. Um, before we go ahead and learn about the Python basics such as variables, functions, and so on, I think it's good that you, you understand how a Python program looks like. This is especially good if you have never programmed before. Now, as in many other programming languages, uh, you may have three kinds of programs. And I'll tell you why we have three kinds of programs. So you may have a program with a command line interface, such as this one here. You may have a program with a graphical user interface, such as this one here. So it's a desktop application. And you may also have a web application, such as this one in here, that runs on the browser, and it can be accessed uh, through the internet. Now, the first thing you should know is that all these programs, they are based on a .py uh, file, such as this one seen here. So this is a, a Python file, and whenever you start building something, you should write your code in this script, uh, which looks like uh, this one here. Anyway, and then once you have that script, uh, you can either uh, run it through the command line interface, such as this one, script 4.py, execute it, and then you communicate with the interface. So your program, your Python program, is asking you to enter some uh, letters in there. Uh, so enter v, uh, v, uh, enter c for consonants, l or c, anyway, and you get some output in the command line interface. Now, when do you use such a program? Uh, well, you'd use this program if you're not planning to, to distribute this program to normal users, to people who don't know programming. So, uh, as you saw, uh, I used Python, the Python program, which I have already installed, and, I show, and I'll show you how to install that later. So I use Python and then point to the Python script, so to the Python program, to execute that program. No, norm, normal users, they, they don't have Python installed, or they don't know how to uh, execute a Python program. And that's why you have graphical user interfaces there, such as this one, or browsers, such as this one in here. And yeah, uh, when would you use a desktop application such as this? Well, you'd use that if you just want to distribute your program to a specific number of users. Let's say you, you, you work on a company and you will want to build a program for the employees of a company to do specific tasks. And so you could build this program, and it's possible to create an executable file out of your Python program. This particular one is a .exe file for Windows. It runs on Windows as a standalone program, but you can also create .app files for Mac computers. And yeah, then uh, the user, they don't need to have Python installed. They would simply execute that uh, .exe file, and they can use the application. So... That's the application, and we'll be building all these three uh, applications in the course. So the command line interface one, uh, the web application, and the desktop-based uh, application. And then you have web applications, such as this one in here. <laughs> so when would you use a web application? Uh, well, web applications are best when your audience is large. So basically, you, you may want as many users to your uh, application uh, as possible. So for instance, uh, what we have here is, this is a geocoder uh, service. So it, it geocodes, it converts addresses to latitude and longitude coordinates. So what users can do here is they uh, can choose a file, so a CSV file, and then uh, you calculate latitude and longitude and send them back a CSV file uh, with those values. So a web application, in simple words, can be uh, for anyone. And uh, this also is based on .py files on the background, so I wouldn't show these files for now. Uh, we're going to build all these applications, as I told you. So, and yeah, that's about this lecture. I hope you, you have a clear idea now on uh, what a program, a Python program, looks like, and what you can do with Python as well. If you have questions, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A section, so in the discussion area of the course. And yeah, I'll be happy to help you. <clears throat> Hope you enjoy this, and I'll talk to you in the next lectures. Hello there, and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, I'll show you how to set up Python in your computer. Specifically, uh, these instructions are for Windows users. So if you are a Mac or a Linux user, you can skip this lecture. 
uh, you can go to the next lecture where I'll show you how to set up Python on a Mac and the instructions also work for Linux users. So for Windows users, please follow if you haven't installed Python yet. Uh, we're going to download and install Python and also try Python out. And so uh, you go to python.org, that's the official uh, Python website and you go to downloads and here you'll see the latest Python version. Currently this is uh, 3.6. Point zero. Just click that and uh, save file. You also notice that there's also a, a version uh, Python 2, so Python 2.7 to be exact. But Python 2 is not being supported anymore uh, after 2020, so Python 2 is slowly retiring. So it's advisable to use Python 3, this one in here. Uh, once you have downloaded the uh, .exe file, just click it. Run. You can choose to install it in the default directory, but you can also do a customized installation if you want to change the directory. Anyway, make sure you have checked this option at Python 3.6 to path. So I'm gonna go with the default installation process. And yeah, that was it. Uh, setup was successful, you can close the window now and we can go ahead and open Python. So how do we do that in uh, on Windows? Uh, well, you can press the Windows key button. So we're, we're talking about the Win key. By pressing it, uh, you will be able to search on the Start button. Alternatively, you can uh, simply go to the Start button, click it and then type CMD and then click on cmd.exe and that will open the Windows command prompt. And so this is like the terminal on Mac or uh, or Linux. Uh, on Mac and Linux is it is referred to as the terminal. On Windows it is referred to as the command prompt or the command line. To open Python all you have to do is type in Python and that will open an interactive session of Python. And uh, an interactive session is best for testing out. So here you can write uh, lines of code one by one, like that. And you promptly get the results in here. So this is why we call it interactive. Uh, but you cannot, uh, it's not very appropriate to write uh, multiple lines of code. So let's say you have a, a program that has 10 lines of code. And uh, in that case, you'd want to write those lines in a file, in a Python file. But we will cover that later. Um, this is the interactive shell. This is good for testing. So before you do a program, you are uh, not sure about certain aspects, certain uh, commands that you want to include, certain keywords that you want to include in your program. So you test things out in here very quickly. Very, this is very efficient. And it's also good for learning to exit the interactive shell, you'd press exit and brackets, open and closing brackets. Now, uh, something you may be, you probably noted was that uh, the Python that I opened was version 3.5.2. But why is that? Because I installed Python 3.6 in here, 3.6. So mm, why did I get Python 3.5.2? Well, the answer is that I already had Three, uh, Python 3.5.2 installed on my Windows. So in other words, before I installed Python 3.6, I could um, uh, trigger a Python shell like that. So the question is, how do I run Python 3.6 now? Well, the, the first thing you should know is that there is no problem having multiple Python installations in your system. Uh, the key here is that you have to assign different commands to each of your Python installations. So for instance, Python 3.5.2 has these commands to run Python. Now for Python 3.6, we need to assign another command. And I'll go and search for the installation directory of, three point, uh, of Python 3.6. So open that. And now Windows, when you search for Python, when you enter the Python command here, uh, Windows it's looking at the path variable, the Windows path variable, and it's searching for this type of command Python. But this was already occupied by another, uh, so by Python 3.5.2, that's why it triggers Python 3.5.2. Uh, so in that case, you may want to do a trick here. 
Uh, let's say uh, do Python 36 and restart the, the command prompt and then run again Python 36 and you get Python 36. So that that's a trick. And again, of course, you can do operations here and so on. Of course, you still have Python 3.5 at least I have Python 3.5. Maybe you don't because you uh, didn't have any Python installed just yet. So that's the idea. On your system, uh, if you install Python for the first time, if you install Python 3.6, you'll be able to execute Python with this command, Python. If you have an existing Python installation and you install a new one, no problem, you can run Python 36 uh, like I did. I hope this was clear and I hope you are up and running now with Python and I'll talk to you in the next lectures. Hi and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture you're going to learn how to set up Python in a Mac computer. Uh, so if you are a Windows user uh, you can skip this lecture because you have a Windows computer and we explained how to set up Python on Windows previously in the previous lectures and the instructions will also work for Linux computers because a Mac is based on Unix. And so, uh, let's begin. Uh, the first thing you uh, need to know is that you already have Python on your Mac. So Python comes shipped with Mac by default. And let's go and open uh, Python. I'm going to click here and then type terminal and then open the terminal app. So terminal is equivalent of a command line on Windows. And here now, let's go ahead and open Python. You can simply call Python, and if you see these three arrows there, that means you were able to start a Python session. So, good news. However, um, if you look here, you'll see this is Python 2.7, so it's a bit outdated. And the current version of Python is Python 3. So it's uh, recommended that you actually install Python 3 on your Mac or Linux instead of using uh, the old version, Python 2.7. Uh, because we're going to use a lot of libraries later on in the course and some libraries may not be compatible uh, for Python 2.7. Um, you can still work with two, Python 2.7 if you take the responsibility to fix errors uh, and uh, compatibility issues that may arise as you uh, learn Python. So it's going to be maybe some extra work. Uh, however, I advise you to install Python 3. So I'm going to exit Python 2, uh, the Python 2 session, exit and two brackets, and you go again back to the terminal. To install Python 3, open a browser, and uh, then you should go to python.org then go to downloads and then install the latest version of Python which should be shown here so Python 3.6 is the current version and uh, that should download Python I can see this bar in here and so please don't uninstall Python 2.7 if you are planning to install Python 3.6 uh, because Python 2.7 is uh, connect it to your operating system so if you uninstall it you may harm your operating system so you may get some messy errors there uh, so simply ignore Python 2.7 so leave it be don't uninstall it and simply click on this package that you have just downloaded you should see the installation wizard so simply go and click continue 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 again and yeah, read the license if you like I'm going to go and click on agree and then install provide uh, your username there your Mac username click on install software and so finally the installation was smooth and it was successful uh, click on close yeah, I'm going to move it to trash. So the uh, installation package 
And now go ahead and uh, go back to your terminal. So again, if you uh, enter Python, you're going to get Python 2.7. Uh, so how do you get Python 3? Well, exit and simply click Python 3, just like that. Execute and you'll see that this is Python 3.6. And yeah, good luck. And so normally this is the command you'll be using on Mac, uh, which means whenever I type Python on Windows, you're going to type Python 3 on Mac or Linux. As easy as that. And so uh, now you have Python installed and here you can do operations. You know, you get the idea. However, please note that uh, what we're doing here, we're um, programming interactively. So we're simply writing some lines of code, but these lines will not be saved anywhere if we write them in this interactive session. Mm, so what we want to do is we want to write scripts of code. So Python files, which we can save, uh, we can save the code and we can execute all the lines at once. And we'll be doing that in the next lecture. So please follow me and yep, I hope it worked for you and I'll talk to you in the next lecture. Hi again and in this video I'll show you how to create and how to run a Python program. In the previous lecture uh, we set up Python and we ran a Python interactive session. So that was like running code line by line. But what we want to do instead we want to uh, write code that uh, we, we are able to save it in a file and we are able to uh, run all the code at once. So that's what we're going to do in this lecture. And this is targeted to Windows users. So if you have a Windows computer please watch this. If you have a Mac computer or even a Linux computer, please skip this video and go to the next video uh, where I show you the same process but on a Mac computer. So Windows users, uh, let's create a Python program. Uh, we're going to uh, use very basic tools for now, but then in the next lecture we're going to uh, download and use an advanced editor. On Windows, before uh, creating the program, there's something you need to make sure of. Uh, you go to Organize, and you go to Folder and Search Options. You go to View, and then look here for this option, Hide Extensions for Known File Types. You want to make sure this option is unchecked, just as I have it here. Don't check it. Yeah. Cancel that. And with the option unchecked, uh, you go ahead and right-click and create create a text document. And put a name, let's say my program, and you want to remove the txt extension. I want to say .py. Okay, no problem. I want to change the name. Now, this is the file where you're going to write your Python code. So just go ahead and edit, uh, edit it with any editor that you have, maybe Notepad. We're going to use Atom later. For now, this is good. And uh, uh, this program, what this will do? It uh, it will print out some text. Let's say the hello text. So that's what you do. You use the Python print function, and then the function has this syntax. So it expects to have some brackets, opening and closing brackets. And inside these brackets, you want to pass the thing that you want to print out. In this case, this is called a string. We'll cover strings later. Or you can say text. So we want to print out some text. And text goes inside quotes, always. So strings, it goes, uh, strings go inside quotes. Uh, make sure you want to save Control S exit the script and then click outside in here and hold shift and right click and then you want to go to open command window here that will open the command prompt look carefully and you'll see that the command prompt was open in this current directory uh, which reflects uh, which is actually the directory uh, of your python file so this one in here this one in here is in here 
So before you run the program, you need to have these two directories the same. Because if you open the command prompt from here, as we did in the previous lecture, that will go to another default directory. Um, so uh, the best way to do is as I did it here. Shift right click and go to open command window here. And then what you do is you type Python and then the name of your program. My program dot py. So what you're doing is you're using Python, the Python program to execute this file. And you get the output in the command line, which is hello, the, the text hello. Similarly, I could uh, execute it with my Python 3.6.py and you get the same output again. So 3.6 and 3.7 doesn't make any big difference. The differences are very, very slight. So you don't have to worry about that. Let me execute it one more time, Python. And if you type now my, and if you press the tab key, that will auto complete the name of your file. So it will find the name of your file because it knows that you are in this current directory. So use tab for auto completion. And yeah, again, you execute it and you get the output. Of course, you can go ahead and add other lines of code there. Let's say print seven, a number. Numbers don't go inside quotes. Uh, Ctrl S to save and close and go to the command line again and press the upper arrow key to execute, to, to call a previously executed statement. So upper arrow key will call Python my program .py, execute and you get hello and seven. That's the idea. Hope you enjoy this and I'll talk to you in the next lecture. Hey, welcome to this new lecture. And in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to create and execute a Python program on a Mac computer. So if you are a Windows user, please skip this lecture. And so in the previous lecture, uh, I showed you how to uh, install Python 3 and also how to launch a Python 3 interactive session. And so which is good for executing and testing out code so like that, line by line, uh, but if you quit the terminal, you're going to lose that code. Um, so um, you want to find out a way to save that code in a file so that you can develop your program step by step. So you can go back to your code, add the code, modify it, and most importantly, you can execute uh, multiple lines at once instead of executing line by line interactively and so let's go ahead and do that uh, normally you need to figure out to, to create a directory where you want to save your program so I'm going to create this folder in here and this is empty for now so I'm going to create a file there uh, there may be different ways of creating a Python file but I prefer to do it via the terminal. So currently, if you do pwd, that will print out the current directory of the terminal. So uh, the terminal is an app and it's, uh, it is open in a current directory, in a certain directory, which is this one for the moment. Uh, if you do ls, you will see the directories and files of the current uh, directory. So uh, users admin has these directories has these folders. Um, so if you want to go to the desktop folder, you'd want to do uh, desktop, or you can use the tab for auto completion. So the tab key, and then on tab, uh, that will take you to the untitled folder. Execute, and I'll see that your current folder is the untitled folder. Uh, that means, uh, you can go ahead and create a file now. Let's say touch my program.py. So you can give it any name that you want. Execute. And that will create an empty file, which for now you can go ahead and edit it with text edit, for example. Uh, later on, we're going to install Atom Editor, which is much more advanced than this uh, simple editor. But for now, this should be enough to just get you started to, to 
to get you the idea on how to execute a Python program. So let's create the code for the program. Uh, this this program will simply print out the hello text. Uh, so you need you use this print keyword, and then you use double quotes, and then the text hello, and then a uh, another double quote to close uh, the text, and then a closing bracket. Control S to save, exit text edit, and then go back to the terminal. And what you do here now to execute your program, the program that you just created, you use the Python 3 command, and then my, you can type my program.py or you can use tab to autocomplete the name, enter to execute, and you get the output of the program printed out in the terminal. So in this case, the output is hello. And yeah, that's how you create an executed program on Mac. And um, similarly, you can go ahead and create other Python programs in here, just as we did with myprogram.py. I can also show you a quick way to actually open the terminal in this current directory without having to do cd and write the path, the path name. Uh, so let's do that. You go here, System Preferences, so this is a one-time configuration. Go to Keyboard, and Shortcuts, and then in the Shortcuts tab, you go to Services. Scroll down. And so um, you probably have this option unchecked. So you want to make sure you have checked the New Terminal at Folder option, just like I have it here. So make, sh make sure that is checked. Close this. And then what you do is, to open uh, the terminal in a current folder, in a specific folder, uh, you right-click on the folder and then go to New Terminal at Folder. And then what you do is, Python 3, uh, my program.py executes, and you get the output. So that's a quick way to open the terminal in a specific folder. And yeah, now that's about this lecture. I hope everything went smoothly and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Hey, hello again. In this lecture, I'll show you how to download and install the Atom editor. Atom is a powerful and very efficient editor for writing and executing Python code. Uh, this lecture is specifically for Windows, so for Mac users, please go to the next lecture. So uh, this far, what we did uh, was we uh, installed Python and we tried a Python interactive session in the command prompt and we also created a Python program using uh, a simple editor such as Notepad or whatever uh, editor you had in, on your Windows. So now we're going to use another editor, which is Atom. And you need to go and install it from and download it from the Atom official web page. Just click the button there, save file, and it will take a while until it downloads. Great, the download process has finished now, so I'm going to click on Atom, click on Run to run the installation, and yeah, you have to wait a while until Atom is installed. And yeah, the installation was quick and now Atom has been open on my Windows. However, I would like to close it here and show you the standard way of how to open uh, Atom. So the way that you'd normally open Atom uh, when you start programming. So one way to open Atom is to browse through your programs and open Atom by clicking it. However, that will open Atom in a random directory, uh, so the most efficient way to open Atom is to go to the directory where you have your programs, so the program that we have is myprogram.py, and then outside in here, right click and go to open with Atom, but if you don't see open with Atom, like I do, so I don't have open with Atom for now, then go and open Atom from your programs, 
go to file settings and then check these two options so these options were under system under the system tab of the settings menu and then close atom and then right click and now you should see this menu in here open it and you should now see this view but if you see the if you don't see the tree view here the directory tree view uh, go to view and then toggle tree view so you can toggle it off and on you can close this and then to open your uh, program so to edit your program uh, you simply double click your file your python file and yeah, you start writing print start adding more code um, always press ctrl s to save and now to execute this code you can either go here and open your uh, command pro window here with shift right click or there is a more efficient way to do it mm, you need to go to file settings packages uh, sorry install you want to install a new package and search for plat platform your IDE terminal terminal hit enter and yeah uh, this is the package I want to install so click install and so this is a package that will install or will integrate a terminal a, a command line inside Atom so you don't have to use external uh, Windows the native Windows command line and you can run your programs from within Atom all right platform your IDE terminal was installed successfully you can close the settings tab and so now you should see this plus icon in here click on the icon will open a new terminal so now this is open in the current directory which reflects the directory of your atom directory uh, so of your programs now you can go ahead and type in commands here to run your python program so my uh, tab for auto completion and that will auto complete like that don't worry about this this just means uh, the current directory so when you uh, do tab tab will add this uh, ignore it and press enter and you'll see the program output in on the terminal you can clear the terminal from the code from previously executed commands and of course you can uh, call previously executed commands with the upper arrow key execute again and don't confuse executing a program with opening a python interactive session so here you write python code like print 7 for example interactively but if you exit this because i see some students will uh, go ahead and, and run python code in here but this is wrong this is not python this is windows the windows command line so don't do that instead write python code inside an interactive session or inside a python file and that's the idea and this is atom i hope you like it and i'll talk to you later hello again and this is yet another lecture for mac users and in this lecture i'm going to show you how to set up uh, the atom editor on a mac computer so if you're a windows user please skip this lecture atom is quite an advanced editor uh, but if you have your favorite editor by now uh, you can go ahead and use that editor so that's perfectly fine uh, if you choose to uh, look to have a look at the atom editor uh, then please follow this lecture uh, you first of all you're going to have to download atom simply search for atom editor and then uh, go to its website which is atom.io download for Mac and so while you wait for the download this is how the Atom editor will look like so like that and so the download has finished on my end and you can go ahead and click Atom 
click open. And yeah, basically, uh, Atom has been downloaded and has been installed. So you've got a welcome guide in here. You can close that. Uh, this is an empty file. I'm going to close it as well. And let me close uh, Atom and try to show you how to actually open it from scratch. So how to start Atom from the beginning. And so let's see how to create a program and execute a program with Atom. And uh, you want to launch Atom. And then go to View, uh, Developer, Open in Dev Mode. And that will ask you for the directory that you want to open. So go to Desktop, and go to the folder where you have your programs, or uh, the folder where you want to create your programs, if you haven't created any program yet, and click Open. And so you get this tree view in here and close that and double clicking a file will open the file here in the editor and so you can go ahead and add more code there uh, 3 plus 4, 4 and you can also create other files so you right click on the main directory go to new file my program 2.py uh, let's say print 5 this time uh, control s to save and so you have two programs now in here and you can switch through the uh, different files by clicking the tabs in here so how to execute these programs now well, you can use your uh, Mac terminal, just as you did in the, previous, uh, in the previous lecture. Or, even better, you can go ahead and install a package. Uh, so, go to Packages, Settings, View, Open. Go to Install. Type Platform U, IDE. So, dash IDE dash terminal enter to search and then go ahead and install the platform IDE terminal package the installation should take a few moments and yeah finally platform IDE terminal has been installed successfully so you can go ahead and uh, close settings and you'll see a plus icon in here if you click that an embedded terminal will open in atom editor and you can drag it down and up to resize it and if you see closely you'll notice that uh, the terminal is open in the current folder see so untitled folder this one in here and that means you can go ahead and use python now python 3 and execute a program my program my tab program.py and that will print hello actually it was supposed to print hello and then 7 but maybe i didn't save the script so click on the editor here Control S to save and then click on the terminal again uh, press the upper arrow key to call a previously executed uh, command execute and you get hello and 7 and yeah this is how to use the atom editor uh, this is good because you have both uh, you have the directory tree here with your files with your Python files and you have the editor here and you also have an embedded terminal so I hope you like Atom, and from now on I'll be using Windows, but things will be exactly the same, uh, because Python is cross-platform, so, which means the code is exactly the same on Mac and Windows and Linux as well. So just follow me, and I hope you'll succeed with Python. I'll talk to you in the next lecture.